for college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. college sports there's light at the end of the tunnel a return to normal and all we love about sports you've instilled resilience focus and selflessness in us we've put those lessons to work we've found strength and unity in each other you continue to take us places we never imagined you bring out the best in us so when we look forward we see the light at the end of the tunnel we see a better world for all of us and, and for college, college sports, sports.
our campus setting as a resource. The construction of modern buildings and facilities during the Welcome back, and we are ready for game three of this best of three series as the Spartans and the Sharks get ready to go head to head, and the winner will advance to the NCAA Championship Series next weekend in Chattanooga. As you see, the first pitch of game three to Lauren Fantone. And Skippy, amazing that once again in the circle for Nova Southeastern is Alyssa Drogemuller. As you see, that one go high and outside for ball two. Yeah, I think uh, Nova, they, they, they brought their horse to the race and they're, they're gonna ride it all the way. I mean, she's looked really good, including last game. Uh, you know, the, the scoreboard said different, but honestly, she pitched a really good game. It was just a matter of an error or a lucky hit. I, we, I, I'm pretty happy with the call. We had been given Julia Allen to start this game for the Sharks, and instead, as you see, Fantone followed that one down the first base side. Roga Mueller pitched a complete game last night, pitched all of the first game today, and now here in the circle again, facing the Spartans, who, by the way, will counter with Mary Beth Feldman, who the Sharks have not seen yet in the first two games. So the Spartans hitter is very familiar with Drogemuller, and Leslie Cantor continues to throw a different wrinkle at the opponent by starting Feldman. Has a count now three and two here against Fantone. And swings and sends a fly ball to center field and that is caught for out number one. You know, as I've been talking throughout the series about the left-handed hitters, last game, uh, there was two really big hits by the left-handed hitters on mistake pitches, and that's what they really have to look for and wait on is to get that mistake pitch. And for the Spartans now, this is Lily Keister, their center fielder. You know, Nova has a lot of confidence in their pitcher. As that ball is going to go inside. You know, she really absolutely has pitched great throughout the series. And I, I'm pretty confident with the call that they made to put her back in the circle. Keister was two for four in the earlier game today. And that's going to be a fair ball down the third base line. And so Keister is aboard as the Spartans' first runner here in game three of this best of three series. And that'll bring up Mariah Galehouse, who was one for three, scored a run, and drew a walk in the earlier game. And, and really, Bruce, she started that big rally. And, and at that last at bat right there, the hitter did a great adjustment, allowing the ball to get deep on her and just dropping the barrel to the ball, not really trying to pull the hands through, and she was able to beat the third baseman. The 0-1 outside for a ball in game, well, technically game two of the series, but in the first game today, Droga Mueller pitched seven innings. She gave up seven hits, three runs. One of them earned and walked three. No strikeouts. And now here she is, the 1-1 one -one against Galhouse, and that's up high for ball two. So I think this game, Tampa is going to play a little more conservative on the base pass compared to last game. You know, last game was a must win as we had the 2-1 offering. Right to third and over to second in time for the out, but not at first. So a fielder's choice for Galhouse as there's now two outs in the top of the first as the Spartans are again the road team. In yeah. the game earlier today, Droga Mueller faced 33 batters. She threw 101 pitches, 59 of them for strikes. Yeah, that's a really good ratio right there. And that last play by the third baseman, great stop, kind of acted like a hockey goal. He kind of closed her elbow down to her hip and just didn't allow that ball to eat her up. Really good play. 
The 0 1 coming now to the second base player, Cameron Weininger. And fouls that one down the first base side. So Mariah Galhouse over at first base. Two outs here in the top of the first. And now the 0 2 on the way from Alyssa Drogemuller, <coughs> who is going to need ice for days on her shoulder. And the throw down to second, not in time. So Galhaus in there safely with the stolen base. And that was a good pitch to run on. I think she may have saw the signal, possibly. You know, went on a big off-speed pitch, and the catcher was not ready for that one. One ball, two strikes to Cameron Weininger. Pitch on the way and fouled just past the Spartans' dugout. Almost took out the, the photo man down there. Did a little ballerina move to get out of the way of that one. I had said there will be ice for days on the shoulder of Drogemuller. I think that'll start about one minute after this game finishes. Oh, absolutely. And up high for ball two. Yeah, so Weininger is starting to show what we saw in that earlier game today, working these counts a little deeper. L looking for the mistake, making her pitcher honest. And now the 2-2 two -two to Weininger and fielded at short over to first in time for out number three. So the Spartans, no runs on one hit. There were no Sharks errors and one Spartans runner left on base. We'll be back with the bottom of the first here in the NCAA Super Regional on TampaSpartans.tv. Back live here at the Moly Family Stadium, as you see Mary Beth Feldman warming up in the circle for UT. And continuing Skippy the conversation about Drogemuller, in last night's game, she threw 101 pitches. And I had just finished saying that in today's first game, she threw 101 pitches. Wow. I mean, that's some kind of consistency. She's been really good. I, I kind of wonder if she convinced uh, Skipper to give her the ball back and say, hey, this is my team. I want the circle. Or was it done by management? 59 for strikes in the earlier game and 63 for strikes last night. Wow, that's impressive. And a bunt. So leading off, Alexis Smith for the Sharks and showing something a little different for the Spartans there. Yeah, that's something we have not seen from the Sharks maybe once or twice throughout the series is a little bunt action, a little small ball. And I think that's what they need to work on to manufacture some runs as this ballpark is not a home run ballpark. And the pitcher, Drogemuller, to the plate now. She was one for three in the first game today. Next pitch from Feldman and Drogemuller flashing bunt. Yeah, that's something I've noticed throughout the series is they're, they're not really manufacturing the runs. They're relying on really deep balls to get the, the runs in and that's something you can't do at this ballpark. The 2-0 and drops the bunt down nicely. Feldman does get it there in time as Weininger comes over to cover. So a successful sacrifice bunt by Drogemuller that moves Smith over to second. 
You know, that's back-to-back -back perfectly placed bunts with a, just a little bit of backspin so the ball dies. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to run it out, but, I mean, beautifully placed. Can't ask for a better bunt. Strike one to Riley Langwell, who was one for three in today's earlier game. And now the 0-1 and up high for a ball. So the count goes even at one and one with one out in the bottom of the first and a runner on second for Nova Southeastern. And finds the gap over the second base bag. The throw comes in high and Smith scores for the early one to nothing Nova Southeastern lead. You know, uh, Mary Beth right there had a little hot pizza. Unfortunately, wasn't able to glove it. Pretty close on it. <clears throat> so Nova Southeastern with two hits here in the bottom of the first. They have a runner on second as catcher Madison Fine comes to the plate. And just like that, Nova's taking the lead in the first inning. Fine was one for three in the earlier game today. And the 0-1 to the Sharks catcher. Right at the hands for a ball. Almost want to say Nova has the hit and run play on it. That was really aggressive lead right there. Just missed for ball two. You know, can't ask for a better heavyweight matchup. Feldman ready. And the 2 1 to Madison Fine. And Balmer ranging back, makes the catch. Nice play defensively for UT. And not caught by Balmer, excuse me, from this angle. She had the ball perfectly blocked and looked like she got to it. You know, that would be a great screen in hockey. Yeah, exactly. So things continuing to go the Sharks' way here in the bottom of the first. They have runners on first and second now. The Sharks are really threatening right here. And a strike there. Tia Williams, the shortstop, count one and one. And up high for ball two. You know, Mary Beth is having some command issues here early. Hopefully she gets settled in. Yeah, I have to confess that I'm already looking in the Spartans' bullpen to see if anyone's throwing. Balmer over to third, and Chevalier, no opportunity for a potential double play. It's always good to get the lead runner right there. Yeah, I would expect with the implications on the line of this game, you know, both pitchers are going to have a short leash. That brings up Kirsten Shaw. Sharks first base player. <clears throat> Shaw was two for two and also walked in the earlier game today. And here comes the 1-0 to her. And that one had to be low because it sure was. I looked right really good to me. Looks like uh, the old skipper is going to go out there and calm the pitcher down, give her some encouragement right here. 
two really close pitches right there, and she's not getting the call. Well, the temperature is 90 degrees, and the feels like is 97. Wow. So this is... It's cooking down there. This is about as as hot seat as you can get, being the third and deciding game and in the intense Florida heat as there's strike to Shaw. <coughs> Got to really buckle down and battle right here. Two and one the count, runners on first and second and gets the strike for a 2-2 two -two count. Two outs in the bottom of the first, and the Sharks have pushed the game's first run across the plate. And the 2-2 two -two now from Feldman. And the line drive into the outfield, and the runner's gonna come around and score, and so a two to nothing lead for Nova Southeastern as Madison Fine crosses home plate and so ending up at second base. It looks like first baseman's gonna switch gloves right here. Indeed, they're going back to Kate DeSimone to pitch after we saw her come on in relief in the game earlier today. So Gwen McGinnis started the game earlier today, went five and two thirds, and then DeSimone came in for the remainder. And now in this game, Mary Beth Feldman lasts only two thirds of an inning before we see DeSimone take over. Yeah, she was really struggling with command, not getting the calls. And unfortunately, she's exiting the game after a 2-0 deficit here in the first. This is where, as a relief pitcher, you're going to have to eat eat it up and keep this at a two-run game. So Kylie Seawick takes over at first base as <coughs> DeSimone goes from there into the pitcher's circle. And to reset, Kirsten Shaw is at first for Nova Southeastern, and Tia Williams is at second. And the batter is Samantha Burke, the third base player for Nova Southeastern. So Keith Dates Moan going to work. And Burke pops up. Fantone there to make the catch to end the bottom of the first. So two runs on four hits, no Spartan errors, and two Sharks runners left on base. We'll be back with the NCAA Super Regional softball game from Tampa right here on tampaspartans.tv. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Back here at the Namoli Family Stadium, Bruce Wozniak along with Skippy Lieberstein and the Sharks jump out to an early two to nothing lead on four hits in the first inning. And Alyssa Drogemuller right back to work again in the circle for the, I'm out of habit, I'm ready to say the visitors because this is not their home ballpark, but they're technically the home team for this game. And for UT, leading things off in the top of the second <coughs> will be Avery Perkins, the designated player. Perkins was one for four and had an RBI in the earlier game today. You know, I kind of wonder if the 
angle of the sun is playing a factor to the left-handed hitters right now. Perkins, a well-hit ball and too hot to handle for Emily Thomas, the second base player for the Sharks. And so Perkins is aboard to start off the top of the second. You know, Bruce, it's pretty hot out there, but that one was hit pretty hot. That was a screamer. That'll bring up Lexi Chevalier. Lexi two for four and scored a run in the earlier game today. And tried to show bunt. <coughs> Takes a lot of discipline to pull the bunt back off a pitch that will be a ball. That way you get a few more attempts at it. 1-0 and drops down the bunt this time and they will get Chevalier at first although she successfully moves Avery Perkins over to second. That'll bring up Caroline Watson, the Spartans catcher. She was <coughs> one for one in the earlier game today and also drew a walk. I have a little conference here. As, as we've seen before, early in the games, they, they like to talk about things. Avery Perkins, the Spartans base runner, coming over to join Head coach Leslie Cantor and assistant coach Denise Rubio, as well as the batter Caroline Watson, as well as Kate DeSimone, who is on deck for the Spartans. So Droga Mueller ready to go back to work now against Watson and up high for a ball. You know, this is where Tampa needs to really capitalize, play Tampa softball, that single, single you to death. Well hit ball by Watson, albeit foul down the left field line. Well, she, she didn't listen to me. Hopefully she straightens that one out. If you can manufacture one run right here, you cut it in half, and that's pretty big early in the game. Yeah, and if they can get to Drogemuller and chip away at the confidence level on both sides, get their own back up and have the Sharks second-guessing themselves. Two and one is the count here against Watson. And another one in the same place as before. She went back to the location as the other one she fouled off. And she's got it timed up really well. And that one may have ended up out on Frederick H. Spalding Drive. Here comes the 2-2 two -two now. And that's outside. The count goes full. It takes a lot of discipline to lay that off. Now you worked yourself to a full count. You gotta really pay yourself off right here. The look into the dugout, checks the wristband. Droga Mueller delivers, and Watson right to the shortstop for out number two. And so with two out in the top of the second and a runner still on second, Kate DeSimone comes to the plate. And DeSimone, a real presence in the earlier game today. Those errors that allowed two RBI for her, as you see that one go foul. You know, that's another pitch that she has pitched inside, and Tampa has been able to beat her with the hands and actually get too far in front of the ball.
You almost wonder if the velocity's starting to go down. You know, it's been hot all day. She's pitched a lot, all three games, two complete games. Yeah, well over 200 pitches between 101 last night, 101 earlier today. And in this game, she's up to 28. In the top, <clears throat> in the top of the second. Really extending the uh, innings here. And strikes out De Simone to end the top of the second. So UT, no runs, no hits, one Sharks error, and we are through one and a half. The Sharks lead at two to nothing. We'll be back with more NCAA Super Regional Softball right here on TampaSpartans.tv. NCAA Division II Community Engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Bruce Wozniak back here along with Skippy Lieberstein. As you see, Kate DeSimone warming up to start the bottom of the second inning. And it's been a very busy day for her. I mentioned when she was just having that at-bat that she had two errors that went her way as a batter in the earlier game that resulted in RBI. She came in as the relief pitcher in that game late, comes in as the relief pitcher early in this one. So a very active day for Kate DeSimone. Yeah, don't forget about the awesome crash bunt play she pulled off. She sold out on that one, and that really turned the game around right there as well. Yeah, one of the defensive highlights from the earlier game today. And she's ready to start the bottom of the second after taking over in the bottom of the first for Gwen, excuse me, for Mary Beth Feldman. Gwen McGinnis is who she relieved after five and two-thirds in the earlier game. And the leadoff hitter is Emily Thomas for the Sharks. Strike one to Thomas. Second base player for Nova Southeastern. Thomas was 0 for 3 in the earlier game today. And you see now 1 and 1 here in the bottom of the second. And that one's fouled off on the third base side. You know, you always wonder about the chess matchups, the what ifs. Like, what if they would have went to Simone to start the game or back to the starting pitcher of last game, you know? It's always the what ifs. And you also have to ask, why do you choose to go with D. Simone? as the reliever for Feldman instead of Gellhouse, who's the ace of the staff. But that's why I always say we're up here and Leslie Cantor is the one down on the field making those decisions. Absolutely. As you see, that one popped out of play on the third base side. It's easy to be the armchair quarterback, but those decisions I'm sure are not made easily. There's a lot of sports psychology that factors in too because you have to consider, and granted there, there could be no tomorrow, but you have to consider how the players are gonna receive the news when they're told they're taken out or they're not gonna pitch or they're not gonna start, whatever the case is. Yeah, it's a lot of team chemistry. The three, two. And so Emily Thomas is aboard the base on balls. That'll bring up Haley Lynch. That's two pitches right there I thought were a punch out. And it looks like the strike zone's maybe just a little above the knee. We are at the bottom of the order for the Sharks. This is the number nine hitter showing bunt, lays it down, and Chevalier gets it there in time. Another perfect bunt. You know, we haven't seen it all series, and all of a sudden they pull it out of the, the golf bag here. But I'll tell you what, that's a lot of ground for Lexi Chevalier to cover. 
coming all the way from third and able to get it there in time. So good defensive play for the first out of the bottom of the second. And a runner at second as we're back to the top of the order and Alexis Smith, strike one. Smith led off the game with a single. You know, with uh, Nova pulling the bun out every so often, it doesn't allow the corners to play true. They have to protect for that bunt. And that opens up the infield very big. Smith behind now 0 and 2. <clears throat> and what I mean by it opens up the infield pretty big is you put a lot of pressure on your middle infielders to cover those holes. The 0 2 and followed back. Smith staying alive here. Her That's teammate Emily Thomas on second base. That's two swings she's had timed up pretty well. I, I would expect some off speed right here to get her timing off. De Simone ready. Winds, delivers, and up high for a ball. That's not a bad waste pitch either. Now you change the eye level. It kind of, if you will, expands the strike zone in your eyes. One ball, two strikes. De Simone ready. Swung on and missed. And down goes Alexis Smith. That was a big strikeout right there. strikeout for out number two. And that'll bring up the Sharks pitcher, Alyssa Drogemiller. Strike one. D. Simone ready with the 0 1 here to Droga Miller. It's on the way and up high for a ball. One ball, one strike in the bottom of the second, and the Sharks with an early 2 0 lead. And to left field it goes, and Lauren Fantone there to make the catch for out number three. So the Sharks, no runs, no hits. There were no Spartans errors and one runner left on base through two complete. Nova Southeastern holds the two to nothing lead. We'll be back with more NCAA Super Regional Softball right here on TampaSpartans.tv. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Ready to go with the top of the third, and for the Spartans, we'll see the nine, one, and two hitters being Steph Ballmer, Lauren Fantone, and Lily Keister. And for Alyssa Drogemuller, she is at 29 pitches through the first two innings. Having to work a little more than usual for her at this point in the game. Tampa was able to get out of the last inning with no damage done. They need to keep applying pressure like they have been, and it, it's gonna come full, full tilt for them. That means, Skippy, that she's up to 231 pitches over the course of last night, the first game today, and now the first couple innings of this one. One ball, no strikes to Steph Ballmer. She really gets a hold of one to the left side. She'll have the left fielder's phone number. Bounces that one foul. One and two 
Balmer, one of a handful of seniors on this Spartans roster, hoping to see her career in the UT uniform last another weekend if they can pull out a victory here in this one. Two that and two. was really tough to lay off. Takes so much discipline. Swung on and foul down the first base line. Droga Mueller, we talked in the first game, Skippy, about the way that she looks into the dugout, looks at her wristband. You have to wonder if that's going to start to take even longer just with the fatigue factor, if she's going to kind of use that to her advantage, what with there being no pitch clock. It, it may be something to pace herself with. Foul down the third base line. You know, uh, Pitching's all about a rhythm, if you will. It's it's the timing aspect. You get used to throwing a pitch every, you know, so many seconds. And once you find that rhythm that you like, you really try really hard to stay in that rhythm. So another 2-2 offering now. Balmer, and this time it's going to be caught in foul territory. So she is retired And that'll bring up Lauren Fantone, the top of the order. Fantone flew out to center field to start off the game. Take strike one. Pitch on the way, and up high for a ball. You know, as, as you were saying, you know, Nova looks into the dugout to get the sign, then they check the, check the wristband. You know, pitchers are so routine. They, they will never forget a step of the, of the process. And as, as part of the battery for many years, you learn pitchers mental aspect and their physical and you can tell when they're starting to fall off their lead leg or you know they're getting a little sloppy with their elbow the one two fantone pops it up and caught for out number two by tia williams and that'll bring up the spartans number two hitter lily keister Strike one to Keister. You know, she's really locating that up and away fastball really well to the left-handed hitters like she did the first night. Keister, the center fielder, keep in mind she's singled in the first inning. And ouch, that one up high and away. Chopped right back to Drogemuller and over to first for out number three. So the Spartans, no runs on no hits. There were no Sharks errors and no Spartans runners left on base. We will come back with the bottom of the third here in NCAA Super Regional Play on TampaSpartans.tv. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you? And we are back. The Sharks coming to bat in the bottom of the third, sending their three, four, and five hitters to the plate. And starting things off 
will be Riley Langwell. Langwell had an RBI single in the first inning. And Skippy, seeing the Spartans go three up, three down, you gotta believe that they're gonna do everything they can to have the same thing, same outcome for the Sharks here to get that momentum, get the blood flowing and get the Spartans excited and ready to come back to the to the plate. You know, since they brought in uh, Simone, I mean, she's really shut the Sharks down pretty well. So defensive-wise, they're playing really good. It's just uh, starting to get on base and extend the innings, extend the at-bats, make the pitcher work. Make the pitcher beat you. Yeah, because at this point offensively, I had mentioned in that Lily Keister at bat that she had the single in the first inning. Well, that's the only hit that the Spartans have in this game through three innings. As you see, that one sent to right field and caught by Gale House. So the Spartans, you're right, they're getting the job done defensively since DeSimone took over, but they got to get the got to get their hitting shoes on. You know, this is game three. The winner is going to go to Chattanooga. It's time to put your dancing shoes on right here. This is the catcher, Madison Fine. Strike one. That was a really nice front door breaking ball right there. She singled in the first inning. And the 0-1 coming to her now in the bottom of the third. Count goes even, one and one. Two runs on four hits for Nova Southeastern. No runs, one hit for UT. And there's one sent to left field. Fantone goes back and Fantone makes the catch. And a well hit ball by Madison Fine, but Lauren Fantone there to haul it in for out number two. You know, most most softball parks, you know, that, that would probably be right at the wall, but not here in Tampa. It's not home run friendly. It's a very pitcher ballpark. That brings up Tia Williams, the Sharks shortstop. Strike one to Williams. She hit into a fielder's choice in the first inning. And now the 0-1 from DeSimone. A bunt laid down by Williams. DeSimone over to first, and they do get it in time for out number three. So the Sharks do, in fact, go three up and three down. And it's a two to nothing lead for Nova Southeastern through three complete. We'll be back with more NCAA Super Regional Softball right here on TampaSpartans.tv. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally, and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things. Mariah Galehouse to lead things off for UT here in the top of the fourth. Her team trails two to nothing, courtesy of two Sharks runs in the bottom of the first inning. Galehouse hit into a fielder's choice in the first inning. And facing Droga Mueller. And that's ball one. It looks like we have lost the uh, scoreboard out there. And there's ball two to Galehouse. Two hundred and forty six pitches by Drogamuller now. And I talked before about ice for days. That's, that's provided that her arm doesn't fall off. 
Yeah, I mean, she's really uh, taking command. She said, this is my team. We got here. I want the ball. So now the 2-1 coming to Mariah Gelhaus. And gets a bat on the ball and the base hit. And so the Spartans finally pick up their second hit of the game here in the top of the fourth. A little hot pizza coming up the middle. She was able to get the glove on it, but just deflected it, unfortunately. That brings up the Spartans' second base player, Cameron Weininger, grounded out to short in the first inning. That looked like a design pitch out right there. That was well in the other batter's box. Interesting that as much as this game has felt like the Sharks have been more or less in control, all of a sudden Weininger represents the tying run and shoots that one foul down the third base line. Well, when you have two heavyweights, you know, uh, almost an in-state rivalry, if you will, you know, they, they could strike at any time, and two runs is not a lot, but I don't expect a very big run game between these great teams. Well, you know, we talk about how much this is not a home run hitter's park, but I had the pleasure of calling a Weininger home run here a few weeks ago. And it's not out of the realm of possibility. She does obviously have the power since she proved it right here in the stadium. As you're speaking to that, Bruce, I've been watching the infield this uh, at bat. They really respect the bat of her. They really give her that respect. One ball, two strikes outside for ball two. As you can see by the outfield as well, they're playing a real deep. Mm. Wow. And the 2-2 two -two on the way. Ball three. You know, she's done great all series, working the count into her favor. She does not give up. Got to find a way to uh, get on base here. Three balls, two strikes. Galhouse over at first. And swung on and coming in from left field. And the catch made there by Langwell, so almost backfired that they were playing her back so far and giving her so much respect that one almost fell for a base hit. Just hung up there a little too long. So that'll bring up Avery Perkins with Galhouse, of course, holding at first base. Perkins and they throw it away and so Perkins is going to go to second Galehouse to third and how about that one that, interesting turn of events that all developed because the hitter was running out of the box applying that you know great speed and the second baseman right there kind of fumbled it if you will in the glove and you know, it's hard to keep your mind slow. As an infielder, you get trained at a young age, slow the game down. It's step by step, the process. And, you know, when you when you get that ground ball and you kind of peek at the runner, you're like, oh, no, I'm out of time. Yeah, bad things happen, and that's why we see a conference going on in the pitching circle as head coach Julie Lemaire came out to talk with the battery and the infielders, and, of course, Spartans coach Leslie Cantor using the opportunity to talk to her two base runners as well as Lexi Chevalier who's now in to hit for UT. And you know, Tampa is applying big pressure right here. You could you could almost feel like it's almost a tied game as it is right now. Even though it's a two oh game, it almost feels tied the way it is. And Lexi Chevalier batting. Skippy, you have said that Lexi Chevalier has really hit the ball well today. She's uh, seeing the ball well. She's really doing her homework, you know, looking at the pitch angle, you know, the release points. And when you see it well, you're going to hit it well. If you're not seeing the ball, you know, you get a hitter to or there. And now the 1-0 coming to Lexi Chevalier. Fouls it on the third base side. 
You know, that pitch was a looked like a running fastball, and it started inside and went to the hands. That way, it takes the power out of the bat. It's really hard to get your hands to the inside of the ball there. That's Avery Perkins standing on second base. Mariah Galhaus on third. And the 1-1 one -one coming now to Chevalier. Up high for ball two. Chevalier hit into a sacrifice in the second inning. And a big opportunity here for her with only one out in the top of the fourth. And pops that back to the screen out of play. You, you could almost feel like this is the game right now and we're only in the top of the fourth. I have to agree. Two two swung on and missed and Chevalier goes down as the second strikeout victim of the day of the game for Drogamuller. You know, that takes a lot of pressure off of Nova right there. The sacrifice is out of play now. Now you're just worried about the hitter right here. The hitter is Caroline Watson, the catcher. She lined out to short in the second inning and looks at ball one there. <coughs> You gotta find a way to extend the inning again. And I feel like the Spartans were successful in doing that in the earlier game today. As you see the next pitch, low for ball two. 2-0 two -oh right here. I think I'm gonna give her the, the double red light, make her throw you a strike. An extended look into the dugout for Drogamuller. Now she's ready. Ball three. Great restraint from Caroline Watson in this at bat. Yeah, as I look down to the third base coach, I'm probably getting a signal just to keep the bat on my shoulder. Let, let her walk me. Make her throw me a strike. And there, oh, Watson thought she had it. Looked like it was close enough for ball four, but count goes to three and one. Watson steps back into the batter's box. And follows it over towards the Sharks dugout. The count goes <coughs> full. There's a pretty big payoff pitch coming up. The 3 2 sent to right field and caught for out number three. And so the Spartans, no runs on one hit. There was one Sharks error and two Spartans runners left on base. So we are through three and a half, and Nova Southeastern in a two to nothing lead. We'll be back with N more NCAA Super Regional Softball on TampaSpartans.tv. Choose Barry University. We transform students into leaders for a greater tomorrow. Our mix of academics, professional skills, and community spirit prepares students to be the ones the world's been waiting for. You see, you don't just earn a degree from Barry. You earn a degree that's going to make a positive impact. And at Barry, you'll make lifelong friends while discovering your purpose, passions, and joy in life. Barry University, your future is yours to create. Back at the Namoli Family Stadium and everything on the line in this game as the winner <coughs> will go on to play in Chattanooga next weekend in the NCAA Championship Series. Kate DeSimone going through her warm-up pitches. If you just joined us, the starting pitcher in this game was Mary Beth Feldman for UT and lasted only two-thirds of an inning before DeSimone 
took over and Skippy, as you had mentioned, has really settled in nicely. Yeah, she she's really working getting that first pitch strike, which is really crucial in today's game. And even with runners on, she's not too worried about them. She's going straight after the batter. She said, I'm, a, I'm up here on the circle. You're in a batter's box. You're facing me. Leading off for the Sharks is the first base player, Kirsten Shaw. Outside for ball one. Shaw with an RBI single. Back in the first inning, she is the number six hitter in the Sharks batting order. And strike one to Shaw. You know, Tampa would like to get a really nice one, two, three inning right here so they can get back to hitting. You know, they had a lot of momentum last inning, was not able to cash in, but applied a lot of pressure. One, one is popped up called for by Balmer and makes the catch in foul territory. So that'll bring up Samantha Burke, the third base player. She is 0 for 1, having flown out to left field back in the first inning. D. Simone back to work and induces a foul ball down the third base line. Got pretty lucky on that one, that was close. Very close. That could have been a stand up double, could have walked in there. The last home game of the season for the Spartans, regardless of the outcome of this game and what a 2023 it has been for them. As you see that pitch go outside for ball one. Maybe a little high. UT with a overall one loss record of 44 and four coming into this game. De Simone winds, delivers, and popped up, called for, and caught by Weininger for out number two. And give the Sharks their due, 42 and 14, their one loss record. And their second base player, Emily Thomas, now to the plate. Ball one to Thomas. Thomas walked in her only previous plate appearance in this game, that in the second inning. Strike and the count goes even one and one. And popped up, called for by Balmer and caught for out number three. So the Sharks, no runs, no hits. There were no Spartan errors and no Nova Southeastern runners left on base. We're through four complete. The Sharks in a two to nothing lead. We'll be back with more NCAA Super Regional Softball right here on TampaSpartans.tv. Back live as the Spartans get ready to send their eight, nine, and one hitters to the plate here on the top of the fifth. Kate DeSimone, Steph Ballmer, and Lauren Fantone. DeSimone struck out looking in the second in her only plate appearance thus far in this game. Although I mentioned what a contributor she was in the win earlier today. A couple of Sharks errors during two of her at-bats. That resulted in RBI. Outside for ball one. 
You know, Bruce, she's kind of doing it all this series. She's flashing the glove, great defense, using the stick, and she's pitching really well. And now the 1 0 fouls it off. You almost have to wonder is the fatigue starting to kick in, or is it still that big adrenaline rush? for the Nova pitcher. I mean, unbelievable pitch count. The 1-1, one, one. and ow, oh, DeSimone just out of the way of that one. Two and one. Skippy, a very tall order for Nova Southeastern asked to come in here and do something that has not happened to the Spartans all year, which would be lose two in a row and so they're saying well we'll take two out of three it didn't have to be back to back after they won that game last night you see the ground out by DeSimone you had talked about kind of the luxury of winning the first game of the series that it really puts all the pressure on the losing team and Nova Southeastern goes out there and loses game two and here they are looking really comfortable looking really good up two to nothing oh yeah absolutely uh, getting the first game in a three game series is so crucial and Balmer follows that one off. You know, it's not as crucial as like a five-game series or a seven-game series, but in a three-game series, it's a sprint. The first one and two, and you always want, you would always love to go back to back. But you know, you really have to admire how comfortable the Sharks look. There's so many teams that we've seen come in here and fall behind, and you just see all the wind go out of their sails. And the Sharks have looked terrific. They lost that game and shook it off as though it never happened. And here they are up two to nothing in the top of the fifth of this one. Oh yeah, they got right back to business. It's almost a, a matter of will of how much, which team wants to go to Chattanooga more. Balmer. Second, the first routine ground out, two away in the top of the fifth, and the Spartans will go back to the top of the order with left fielder Lauren Fantone. Yeah, as you flip the lineup card around, you know, you would like to extend the inning and get something going here. Fantone 0 for 2 in this game, and looks at the first pitch for a ball. Inside for a ball. And now the 2 0. Strike one. You know, Skippy, I don't even find myself looking in the Sharks' bullpen to see if they have anyone up throwing. You just know that they're going to stick with Drogamuller if they've gone this far with her. Oh, absolutely. And Fantone, routine ground out. Spartans are quickly retired in the top of the fifth. No runs, no hits, no Sharks errors, and no Spartans runners left on base. Kate DeSimone warming up as we get ready for the bottom of the fifth. And Skippy, I almost am 
questioning if I'm reading this correctly because total pitches for Kate D. Simone just 29, and yet Mary Beth Feldman threw 23 in two thirds of an inning. Well, that's um, that's the product of being aggressive and challenging the hitters and having trust in your defense. You're going to be all over the plate, and you trust your defense to go get the ball and get the out. And honestly, since she has come in, they've only gotten a hit or two off of her. As she's done uh, since the last game is getting that first pitch strike. Leading off the bottom of the fifth for Nova Southeastern, this is Haley Lynch, the right fielder. And the 0-1 swung on and missed. That was a nice off-speed pitch right there. Right after a fastball. And now the 0-2 outside for ball one. One, two, a pie for ball two. It's a darn rare thing for any team to come here and win, not to mention take two of three from the Spartans. But boy, Nova Southeastern looks about as poised to do it as anybody. As you see, that one popped up and caught. Kylie Sewek ranging in from first base to make the catch. You know, when... When I play the three-game series, we always, if we ever made it to the third game, it, we're no longer in a series. You know, it's a one-game playoff. It's a sprint, and that's got to be the mindset because there's no more games after this. Now, one of these teams is playing their last game of the season. As you see, the top of the order now, and it's Alexis Smith, the center fielder. One for two in this game with a single and a strikeout. And Kate DeSimone's 1-0 on the way to her. Popped up and out of play. And possibly even out of the stadium. And it sounded like it bounced out behind us. You know, these two teams coming into the matchup, with uh, UT's, you know, win record at home and Nova's red-hot gameplay. Was, what was it, Bruce, 13 or 14 winning streak? Yeah, 14. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, one of those streaks has to be broken. And that's what you want in this kind of matchup, two heavy, heavyweight boxers going at it. One ball, two strikes, as you saw Smith showing bunt and... Gets the bat on the ball this time. <coughs> right field and caught by Galhaus. You know, Tampa would like to get it out of this and not let it get extended so they can go hit again. You know, the pay, pay window is starting to open up again for Nova. So Droga Mueller, the pitcher, into hit. Another Here's first pitch the strike right there. Two runs on four hits for Nova Southeastern. No runs, two hits for UT. The 0-1 and strike two. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. T. Simone trying to close this out and get her team back to the plate. Try to cut into this deficit. And a foul ball down the third baseline. You know, I, I almost, if I didn't have the scoreboard out there or the, the computers here, I would think it's a 0-0 zero, zero game. You know, once she came in to take over in the first inning, she's done really well of keeping them off the bases. And if you're a Spartans fan, that's why it's unfortunate that it is what... The scoreboard says two to nothing because you're exactly right. It has otherwise been a scoreless game that's playing like a scoreless game. You know, a real pitcher's duel. And that and that's what you would like to see in game three. 
The 0-2 once again. Another foul ball down the third base line out of play. That time it stays in play, but Fantone is there to make the catch for out number three. No runs, no hits, no Spartans errors, and no Sharks runners left on base. We are through five complete. Nova Southeastern continues to lead it two to nothing. We'll be back with more NCAA Super Regional Softball right here on TampaSpartans.tv. The top of the sixth inning as time becoming a factor for the Spartans. They will start off with the center fielder, Lily Keister, coming to the plate. One for two in this game. She singled in the first and ground out to the pitcher in the third and needs to get things going here for her team to try to chip away at this two to nothing deficit. And this Skippy, no doubt, is where you look to exactly where they are in the lineup, your two, three, and four hitters to generate the offense that they need to get back in this game. You got six outs left and the heart of the order coming. This is where you want them to work. One ball, one strike. You know, it's, it's what team wants to go to Chattanooga more. Fouled on the third base side. One ball, two strikes as Drogemuller gets set, delivers, and outside for ball two. Driven to left field and caught. Langwell there to make the catch for Nova Southeastern. So that brings up Mariah Galehouse. Also one for two in this game, as Keister was. You almost look to the the veteran of the Tampa team here to spark a rally once again, like she did last game. No balls, one strike. And up high for ball one. Top of the sixth, one out. And the 1-1 one, one coming now to Mariah Galhouse. Sends that one to right field and caught by Lynch for out number two. And that'll bring up Cameron Weininger, the number four hitter. 0 for two in this game. And a base hit for Weininger to left field. Nicely hit ball. 
You can and see her looking into alive. the dugout, trying to get him fired up over there. She said, this game's not over. That'll bring up Avery Perkins. And like DeSimone in the earlier game today, Perkins has reached on errors in each of her first two plate appearances today. And interestingly enough, both of those for the defense committed by the second base player. You can see the outfield looking for the oppo hit as there's a major gap over there in right center. If you hit that gap, I mean, there's nobody that's going to get to it. One ball, one strike to the designated player, Avery Perkins. And it follows that one out of play. One ball, two strikes, two outs in the top of the sixth. Avery Perkins is the tying run. And this time fielded by the second base player and over to first in time for out number three. So the Spartans, no runs on one hit. There were no errors and one runner left on base. Still two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the sixth. You're watching NCAA Super Regional Softball on tampaspartans.tv. Back here at the Namoli Family Stadium as we get set for the bottom of the sixth inning. And Nova Southeastern still with a two to nothing lead that they built in the bottom of the first and scoreless ever since. You know, I, I go back to the what if, Bruce. What if they start Simone? I mean, you, you don't know. She, she came in and almost in a starter situation, if you will and has completely shut them down on the bases. Maybe one or two hits, maybe a walk. I mean, she has been lights out. Kate DeSimone only started four games this season, 11 appearances. But as I said, only started four of them. I mean, you could almost say this was a, a start with two-thirds two in the first. And now the 1-0 against the batter, Riley Langwell. Gave a bunt offering trying to catch the corners off guard. Now they're going to have to play in front. This is a big opportunity for the Sharks, the three, four, and five hitters this inning to try to add to their lead as you see that one hit to left field and Fantone makes the catch. That brings up the catcher Madison Fine. One for two in this game. And the count one and oh to her here in the bottom of the sixth. Strike one, Nova Southeastern hoping this is their last at bat of the game. You almost kind of wonder if they hurry up and get out of this inning just uh finish it off. The 
2-1. Popped up, called for by Balmer, and she makes the catch for out number two. That'll bring up Tia Williams, the Sharks shortstop. And into a fielder's choice in the first and then ground out to the pitcher in the third. A real confident group, Skippy, these Nova Southeastern Sharks. You and know. rightfully so. They, they played well all season and get to this point. There's no reason they shouldn't be confident. One ball, one strike to Tia Williams. And strike two. You can almost feel there's a sense of urgency on the Tampa side right now. A pie for ball two. I would say they're darn well better be a sense of urgency at this point. And the 2-2 two -two gets the strikeout and that'll retire the Sharks in the bottom of the sixth. No runs, no hits, no Spartans errors and no Sharks runners left on base. We'll be back with the top of the seventh here in NCAA Super Regional. Lexi Chevalier leading off for the Spartans here in the top of the seventh. You know, if you're Tampa, it's time to put your dancing shoes on. Chevalier, a sacrifice in the second, struck out in the fourth, sends that one foul down the left field line. Lexi, the number six hitter, she'll be followed by Caroline Watson and Kate DeSimone. The three of them a combined 0 for 5, so you could argue that they're due. But of course, the list of Druggemuller wants to have something to say about all that. As she is now over 290 pitches between last night, the earlier game today, and this one. Wow. You know, you could argue she's the MVP of the series for sure. The 1-1, one, one. Chevalier chops it to short. Williams gets it there in time. One away in the top of the seventh. 15, Caroline Watson, the, the Spartans catcher, Caroline Watson to the plate. You know, one thing, Skippy, that Spartans need to resist at that point is if you're Caroline Watson, one swing of the bat is not going to tie the game. So it's base hits. You're not going for home runs. That's the name of the game, and that's been my attitude over the career of my, my playing days is a home run's not always going to help. It's always about being on base. That does more for your team than one home run. And in today's game, you don't really see that attitude anymore. It's all about the, the long ball, if you will. One ball, one strike against Watson. A 
right across the numbers for ball two. Almost a little too close to the numbers on her jersey. I don't want to say brushed her back a little, but it was that close. The 2 1. Just catches the corner for strike two. The pressure mounts here for Caroline Watson. Two balls, two strikes. I think there's going to be a challenge pitch. And caught on the run. A nice defensive play there coming all the way over from second base, Emily Thomas. And so Kate DeSimone represents the Spartans' final hope. And it's rather fitting with all that she has done for her team today. And you almost feel like she's gonna reach base somehow and would be deservedly so. Yeah, she's played really well this whole series. The pitching, the glove, the defense, the hitting, doing it all. And now the 0 1, a pie for a ball. Swung on and fouled out of play on the first base side. One ball, two strikes to DeSimone. And the Sharks fans that are here it's almost getting time excited. To celebrate for him. One, two to short over to first. And the Nova Southeastern Sharks defeat the Tampa Spartans two to nothing. And they will go to the NCAA Championship Series next week in Chattanooga. And congratulations to head coach Julie Lemaire and her roster as they come in here and do something that no team has done all season, taking two of three from the Tampa Spartans. You know, that, that was really impressive uh, series by Nova. Great game plan, well execution. And honestly, uh, the pitcher has to be the MVP of the series. It, if she doesn't get it, I, I, I would like to question who hands it out, honestly. She <laughs> has done absolutely phenomenal, just executing pitch after pitch, getting in a jam, getting out of the jams. Unbelievable. I, I want to see the stat line on that one. Yeah, fantastic pitching by her. The final line score in this game, two runs on four hits, two errors for Nova Southeastern. No runs on three hits, no errors for the Spartans. And so Nova Southeastern is victorious for the second time in less than 24 hours. And the Spartans, as a result, will finish with an overall one loss record of 44 and five. While the Sharks, whose season will continue, improved to 43 and 14. And disappointing, Skippy, as it relates to, as you said so many times, Kate DeSimone, a wonderful job pitching. The problem was that the first two-thirds of the game, the first two-thirds of the first inning, did not go UT's way. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was really the whole game right there. And once she was brought in the pitch, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but maybe one or two hits, two or three base runners due to walks or what have you unbelievable job by her just to come in and shut the game down and allowing her offense to go to work unfortunately they just they didn't have it and we're going to see the ceremony take place down in the field now but i want to thank everyone for watching tampa spartan softball all season long i want to thank skippy lieberstein for joining me on the broadcasts today I'm Bruce Wozniak. Hope you enjoyed the season as we watch the final se the final ceremony unfold. We'll see you next year. I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven.